It's time to sit back, relax, and listen to Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life will inspire, motivate, and empower you. Live your best life now. Listen, learn, think, and decide. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. And now, here's your host, Joan Herman. Welcome to Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. I'm Joan Herman. Thanks for tuning in. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life brings you interviews with some of the most inspirational and influential people in the world. It's our goal to educate and empower you so you can live your best life now. Thank you for taking time for yourself and thank you for letting us be a part of your life. We have another great show for you today. When today's guest, Mac Lukavir's mother, was diagnosed with a mysterious form of dementia, Mac sought out to learn everything he could about brain health and performance. Today, Max is recognized as an expert on the topic, and he joins us to share insights into how to improve your brain power and rejuvenate your brain. Max is a New York Times bestselling author and the director of the upcoming film, Breadhead, a documentary about dementia prevention through diet and lifestyle. He was a journalist for Al Gore's Current TV and has been featured on NBC Nightly News, The Dr. Oz Show, and in The Wall Street Journal, among others. His new book is Genius Foods, Become Smarter, Happier, and More Productive While Protecting Your Brain for Life. Welcome, Max. Thanks for joining us. Thanks so much for having me. It's an honor to be here. This is a a really important topic, I feel, because I think so many of us really don't understand the power that we have over our brain and the way we age. So what is it that happened to your mother that got you started on the journey of studying brain health and performance? Well, as you mentioned, my background was in journalism. So one thing that journalists, I think, uh, have in common with scientists is that they know how to, um, you know, be really diligent about their sources. They know how to ask questions and they maintain that skepticism that's so important when uh, assessing um, claims. And so about seven years ago, I was coming off of my role at Current TV, as you mentioned, and it was at that time that in my personal life, both myself and my younger brothers started to notice the very earliest symptoms of dementia in my mom. And I had no prior family history of any kind of neurodegenerative disease. Um, And certainly my mom at the time was 58, so she was not exactly the picture of somebody uh, succumbing to old age. So because I really had no scapegoat when it came to uh, understanding these horrible symptoms that I began seeing in my mom, I mean, certainly they were more mild um, in the earlier stage, but essentially I became uh, obsessed with learning everything that I possibly could about diet and lifestyle and, you know, how the foods that we eat may uh, influence our risk for these kinds of conditions. You know, today when you make it to the age of 85, you have a 50% chance of being diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. So, you know, certainly my family has been uh, affected by dementia, but I'm not alone. So many people today in the United States are touched by this tragic disease. And I'm just really, um, I became interested in the notion of prevention when I learned shockingly that they begin in the brain oftentimes decades before the first symptom. So that's why I decided to write Genius Foods, which was really meant to be what I think the ultimate dementia prevention manual. Max, what are the bad guys that you refer to that cause brain issues? Well, you know, people are pretty savvy these days. I think uh, there's increasing awareness about the dangers of sugar, Um, certainly when it comes to our waistlines. But what I think is less understood is just how damaging chronic uh, consumption of sugar is to our brain health. So when we eat sugar, a hormone in the body becomes elevated called insulin. Now, insulin is not a bad hormone at all. You know, I mean, it's one of the most conserved hormones in the animal kingdom meant to shuttle away calories into our muscle tissue or our fat cells. Today, unfortunately, the average American is consuming about 300 grams of carbohydrates every single day. And this is owed partly to the fact that for the past couple of decades, we were told to eat in accordance with the food pyramid, which advised us to load up on grain products, anywhere between six to 11 servings per day. And what happens is that causes that hormone insulin to become chronically elevated. Now, 40% of Alzheimer's cases might be owed to chronically elevated insulin. This is uh, a figure That was determined thanks to a robust analysis published in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease. 
And, you know, our brains are highly sensitive to chronic fluctuations in blood sugar and chronically elevated blood sugar might um, lag behind chronically elevated insulin uh, by a decade. So that's why in the book I talk about becoming very mindful of the kinds of foods that you're eating, and especially when those foods contain concentrated sources of carbohydrates. And so listening to you, cutting down on our sugar intake, that's something within our control. Other things that are detrimental to us, inflammation or being nutrient deficient, uh, toxic exposure, chronic stress, sleep loss. These are all things that we have control over. So what does the science say? If we were to make changes today, we could do a lot toward prevention. But what about somebody who has a broken brain already? Is it ever too late to heal the broken brain? Absolutely not. No, it's never too late. Um, I mean, certainly, you know, nobody has ever, just to be very clear, mm-hmm. um, the fact that my mother has dementia, I, you know, it's, it's dedicated me to accurate communication of the science. Nobody's ever recovered from Alzheimer's disease. There, right. you know, nobody, there's no evidence that it's ever been reversed, um, anything like that. Uh, that being said, if you have a risk factor, if you're cognitively healthy and in old age, or even if you've, uh, progress to something called mild cognitive impairment, which is considered pre-dementia, um, there are lots of steps that you can take that might not only significantly improve the way that your brain works, uh, again, even in old age, but also help delay significantly cognitive decline. And, you know, when it comes to somebody with Alzheimer's disease, there is limited evidence, but, you know, if you were to take a rigorous, full dietary and lifestyle Uh, approach, essentially going to war against the disease, you can also improve cognitive function and potentially slow the progression of the disease, which, you know, unfortunately is degenerative. But in my book, I uh, detail the findings of the finger study, which is one of the best pieces of evidence that we have to date. It was performed out of Stockholm, Sweden, with about 1,200 patients randomized to either standard of care or a dietary and lifestyle intervention. And these were all much older people. They were in their 60s and 70s. And I've actually been to Helsinki where they performed the intervention. And I've gotten to interview some of the patients. And what they found was that when they had a full dietary and lifestyle makeover, so, you know, going from, you know, maybe a diet that wasn't uh, the healthiest to one that was built around dark leafy greens, fresh fruits and vegetables, uh, extra virgin olive oil, fatty fish, things like that and exercising more, engaging socially, these are all important um, aspects of the intervention, that they were able to improve their uh, memory function by about 25%. And their brain's processing speed, which is one of the earliest domains to be affected by uh, aging, they were able to improve that by 150%, which is robust and incredible. Um, You know, processing speed was one of the first areas uh, that me and my brothers really started to notice that my mom's brain had essentially downshifted. It's one of the areas where, you know, when you're talking to a much older person, it's apparent that their brain isn't working with the zest that uh, a younger person's brain is. Those are, those are all, um, you know, outward expressions of this uh, cognitive ability called processing speed, which is very important, you know, when it comes to bonding to stimuli, driving, things like that. Uh, responding to people, to questions that we get. Um, These are all aspects of processing speed. And so, you know, the fact that these um, older adults were able to see such a robust improvement in their processing speed to me is very, very exciting. Well, and I think it's exciting. You know, I'm listening to you. I think it's exciting for someone of any age. I'm in my early 50s. And some of the things that you're mentioning, I feel myself already experiencing. So the information that you're providing is really relevant for any of us. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, certainly I'm so passionate about, um, you know, spreading the the gospel, uh, as it were, of dementia prevention. But my book is really written for people of all ages. So, Mm -hmm. you know, just as as much as I am so pleased to be able to detail the findings of that, that finger study, I also cite research where they have done interventions in much younger people with certain nutrients found in certain foods uh, that I talk about where um, processing speed in younger people was improved significantly by about 20%. So, you know, again, you're never too young or too old to take steps for a more optimally performing brain. And, you know, just to take this out of uh, the realm of abstraction, you know, our brains really are the batteries that make everything that we love to do in life possible. Um, connecting with people, socializing, loving things, feeling a sense of awe and wonder. I mean, these are all 
um, manifestations of the power of our incredible brains. And the fact that we can eat in a certain way, um, that we can pick foods at the su supermarket that are going to help enhance the way that that apparatus works to me is uh, just so incredible and such a gift to be able to have this, this knowledge thanks to our scientific researchers. So, so yeah, I mean, I think that no matter who you are, you're going to benefit from the foods and the, uh, the tactics proposed in Genius Foods. Max, going along with what you just said, when we think about being happy, food doesn't usually come to mind, but you say that there are foods that improve happiness. So for someone who wants to make a change right now, they're listening to you and this person says, I'm going to start some lifestyle changes. What could that person incorporate into his or her diet to begin that path? So I would say that um, there are a handful of foods that I uh, call genius foods. And just to list a few of them, um, avocados are incredible. Uh, they are a perfect brain food. They contain an abundance of healthy fat, um, very specific fats that um, have shown to really kind of uh, ease the uh, – the load on the body in terms of inflammation, while also making many of the nutrients in avocados more accessible to you. So avocados are full of powerful antioxidants like lutein and zeaxanthin, as well as vitamin E. And these uh, nutrients are so important when it comes to protecting our brains against um, aging, but they need fat to be absorbed. And so conveniently, avocados, which are also actually called butter pears, have a, an abundant source of these fats as well as the nutrients that require fat to be absorbed. I talk a lot about dark leafy greens. Research out of Rush University found that people who consume a large bowl of dark leafy greens every single day have brains that look 11 years younger, up to 11 years younger on scans. So that's incredible. Um, and dark leafy greens are full of uh, micronutrients, they're full of fiber, and so it's, it's very, um, you know, it's easily understood as to why this might be the case. The other foods that I recommend, um, eggs. I'm a big proponent of eating uh, omega-3 enriched or pastured eggs. Um, you know, for the past couple of decades, just like the food pyramid, we were, we were warned against the, the quote-unquote dangers of, of cholesterol found in the yolks of eggs. But egg yolks are literally designed by nature to contain all of the in, uh, nutrients and ingredients required to nurture a developing brain. So I'm a huge fan of eggs and actually research has found that even a high egg consumption in populations that are genetically prone to heart disease uh, didn't seem to influence their risk and, in fact, improved cognitive function in this population. So, so I'm a big fan of, uh, of eating eggs. I try to eat at least an egg a day. Other foods that I recommend, uh, grass-fed beef, incredibly important. You know, uh, I'm not a fan of eating, um, like, only meat. So for me, it's about balance. You know, as I mentioned, vegetables are incredibly important, dark leafy greens, but I certainly believe that uh, grass-fed beef is a health food, and I'll, I'm happy to, deb to debate anybody who thinks otherwise. Um, you know, researchers speculate it was access to the nutrients, as well as protein and calories, but the nutrients found in, uh, you know, obviously naturally, naturally raised land animals that help catalyze the growth of our brain. So, you know, I uh, will often buy ground grass-fed beef from the supermarket, which is a very economical way of, of getting this beef. And I do not make the recommendation to eat grain-fed, industrially factory farm beef. So there's a, that's a very critical distinction that I make in the book. The book is Genius Foods Become Smarter, Happier, and More Productive While Protecting Your Brain for Life. If you'd like to get more information about Max and his work, you can visit his website, maxlugavere.com. Max, in about 30 seconds or less, what's a takeaway? What do you want to leave our listeners with? You know, I think the, the key takeaway is that you can change your brain at any age. And um, this is really important. You know, I think that there's a AARP did a study in 2015 that found that 90 percent of Americans believe that brain health is important, yet are largely in the dark in terms of how to maintain or improve. it. So with Genius Foods, you are going to have a de facto owner's manual to the human brain, even though the human, you know, unfortunately, the human brain doesn't come with an owner's manual. But given the best available evidence that we have today, you can take very uh, easy steps in your day-to-day -day life every single day and with every meal that are going to enhance the way that your brain functions while also helping shield it against disease in the long term. Max, thank you so much for being here and for teaching us ways that we can improve and protect our brain. You presented great strategies to help us cope with stress, battle brain fog, and improve our quality of life. So thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. It was a treat. This is Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. Stay with us. We'll be right back.